It's Freedom Files with James Burns. Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Wednesday, January 4th, 2012. I am James Burns. Been keeping track and tabs on the caucus results all night long, Tuesday evening. And I was uh, tweeting them as they were coming up, reporting. And I know some more numbers are going to come in after I publish this podcast. And these aren't the final tally. But we can pretty much get an idea where the ranking system is. And I put together this chart for you, which you can see right now on uh, YouTube if you're listening to this via the YouTube channel, Freedom Files US. And I got several different versions. Uh, you know, Rick, Rick Santorum looks like he's barely in first place, and that may change. But for the most part, it looks like it's going to be a tie between Rick Santorum and Mitt Romney at 25% apiece. Now, according to the Drudge Report, at the time I did this podcast, which is about 1120 Central. And as you can see, Rick Santorum is barely in the lead, according to Drudge, with 29,210 votes to Mitt Romney with 29,173 votes, roughly a 37-vote difference. Now, over here on the left side, you can see a little bit different numbers from uh, Yahoo and ABC, but basically the same, 25% each for Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum. Ron Paul also made it in the top three with 21% of the vote. He got about over uh, 25,000 votes altogether. And in fourth place is Newt Gingrich with 13%, and that translates to about 15,000 votes for him. Rick Perry came in at 10% of the vote with about 12,000 votes. Michelle Bachman had a really bad day. I guess uh, she didn't get that divine intervention she was hoping for. She ended up at about 5% with 5,000, 6,000 votes, somewhere in that ballpark. Five, 6,000, right there at 6,000. And uh, John Huntsman had a really, really bad day. And as you can tell, he is the 1% with only 702 votes. No preference, got 130 votes. Other got about 115 votes. Herman Cain, who's been out of the race for about a month or so, got 57 votes. And Buddy Romer only got 47 votes. Now, of all the candidates that ended up at the bottom of the dog pile, it's Buddy Romer that I feel the most sorry for. He was a former governor of Louisiana. He deserved to be up on the stage during all the debates, just like all the other candidates did. He deserved an equal amount of attention for the mainstream media. But unfortunately, he got screwed by the GOP and the mainstream media in both regards. On the other hand, I could care less for the fact that uh, Bachman and Huntsman did poorly, especially after Huntsman, you know, started ripping on Ron Paul like that. <laughs> yeah, he deserved that because he was talking about Ron Paul's unelectable. Well, what does that make you, Huntsman? And a lot of people right now online are kind of down a lot of Ron Paul supporters are because he didn't finish in first place and while I understand that and I would have liked for him to finish in first place you have to look at the fact that he is in the top three and that's going to make a lot more undecided voters give him a serious look even more serious than the day before before the Iowa caucus now let's take a step back in time to 2008 during the Iowa caucus in 2008 let's look at the results then uh, first place was Mike Huckabee. He got 34% of the vote. Mitt Romney came in second place with 25% of the vote. Fred Thompson had 13% of the vote. And uh, tied at 13% of the vote was also McCain. So they both got 13%, Thompson and McCain. Ron Paul at the time only came in about 9 to 10% of the vote, like 9.93% of the vote. Well, so that's roughly 10%. And Rudy Giuliani got 3%. So Ron Paul did way better this time around in 2012 in Iowa than he did back in 2008. So that's a positive. Plus, I think Ron Paul is going to do fairly well in a week from now in New Hampshire. I think he's going to have a pretty decent day. I think he's going to at least get in the top two. And probably top three, maybe even first place there. So you never know what may happen in a week from now. I think that Bachman, Huntsman, Perry, all three of them are in serious trouble. I mean, within a couple of days or hours or a week from now, or maybe after New Hampshire, you're going to see them dropping off from the race, bowing out. And I think Perry's going to stay until after South Carolina because he's making such a big deal about that. 
But if he flops in South Carolina, I think Rick Perry's done. And then, of course, you move on to the Virginia ballots and the Super Tuesday. And, of course, as we all know, only Ron Paul and Mitt Romney are on the ballot in Virginia. And the Attorney General got a lot of heat for his attempt to try and get all the other neocons on the ballot. And he backed down. So it's only going to be Romney versus Ron Paul in Virginia. So that's going to be a good opportunity to see how well Ron Paul and Mitt Romney go up against each other. And there is another debate coming your way in just a few days from now, coming up on January 7th. That is a Saturday, this coming Saturday. So if you're not watching the uh, Saints game or the Lions game, whichever team you're rooting for, it doesn't really matter in the end. It's just a game. You can watch the debate on ABC. And from the way certain candidates performed in the Iowa caucus, I wouldn't see Huntsman on the stage or Bachman and perhaps not even Perry. So chances are those three are most likely not going to get an invite. Well, they may let Perry on the stage because he's such a goofball, but chances are Bachman and Huntsman will probably won't be getting an invitation to the ABC debate coming your way on Saturday, and we will be covering that as well here at Freedom Files. Before we wrap up, I'd like to uh, talk about a couple of other polls that happened Tuesday, not just the Iowa caucus, but a poll that was done by our favorite neocon, Mark Levin, on his website. He was asking everybody, if you were voting in Iowa today, well, Tuesday, who would you vote for? And Guess who came in first place on his poll? Ron Paul at 32% with Centorum in second place at 28%. And, of course, Gingrich at 17% in third place. So I'm sure that tore up Mark Levin pretty badly. <laughs> See, one of his least favorite people, you know, get first place on his website. <laughs> I had to take a shower after I voted because <laughs> I rarely go to Mark Levin's site. <laughs> Uh, hopefully, uh, Mark Levin won't have a stroke or a heart attack after he sees those results. I'm being sarcastic. I don't care if he drops dead. Anyways, another poll that was done was uh, the Drudge Caucus, which was kind of interesting. They did it all day long. And I um, every hour, I collected the uh, results from the first hour, which was about 1 o'clock. Uh, it started at 1.10 p.m. Central, as you can see. Ron Paul was obviously in the lead. And, you know, you move on to 2 o'clock, Ron Paul is still in the lead with Mitt Romney right behind him. 3 o'clock, same thing. More and more people start voting. By 3 o'clock, you've had over 250,000 people vote in the this Drudge Caucus, with Ron Paul leading 30%, Romney 25%, Santorum 17%. 4 o'clock, Ron Paul leading still with 31%, Romney 25%, Santorum still at 17%. And, you know, over 100,000 people had already voted for Ron Paul, uh, 106,000 actually. And then by 5 o'clock, Ron Paul had over 127,000 people voting for him in the Drudge Caucus. Once again, leading with 31% of the vote with Romney at 24%. Santorum in third, once again, with 17%. 6 o'clock, uh, Ron Paul was still in the lead in a commanding authority with 145,000 to amid Romney's 109,000. And, of course, at 7 o'clock, Ron Paul had 160,000 votes on the Drudge Caucus with Mitt Romney at 120 votes. And the finale, the final tally for the Drudge Caucus, is Ron Paul in first place with 172,670 votes. Mitt Romney in second place with 129,407 votes. Rick Santorum with 95,518 votes. Newt Gingrich with 67,061 votes. And all the other candidates pretty much sucked. <laughs> Coming your way tomorrow on the Freedom Files podcast, we'll be joined by Bob Chapman, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. So if you have a question for Bob, feel free and send it my way via the Freedom Files website, freedomfiles.us. And while you're at Freedom Files, you can check out past shows, past guest interviews, doc reviews, web shows. You can also uh, find us on several social sites, all linked up to freedomfiles.us. We're on Facebook. We're also at YouTube, obviously, Freedom Files US. Please subscribe to me and share my videos and web shows and podcasts and all that fun stuff. While you're at freedomfiles.us, if you haven't done so already, vote in our poll question, how will 2012 go down? Bob Chapman coming your way Thursday on the Freedom Files podcast.